la discursul doamnei comisar Chiriachides și pentru că toți din această sală avem în momentul acesta oameni, prieteni, rude care... Thank you, Madam President. Uh, we have friends and uh, relatives uh, who have been badly hit by the pandemic. That is where we are, unfortunately. And I speak on behalf of my uh, budgetary colleagues uh, because they have done an extraordinary job uh, presenting a, a veritable pact at a time when we could demonstrate that it is possible uh, to act uh, and send somebody uh, to the moon Unfortunately, uh, Commissioner, uh, we need European Union for health. Uh, I thought it was a good time to send somebody, perhaps, uh, uh, to the moon. I've seen what happened with this uh, original budget. Uh, we here uh, decided uh, that uh, there would be cuts made by the Council. Those uh, who did not participate in that discussion, we managed to uh, increase the budget by uh, uh, one billion. Now. Uh, we, people don't always know what's happening in Brussels, uh, what the situation has been. We've seen uh, uh, the uh, uh, different uh, phenomena that have affected us. Uh, but uh, what should encourage us in this crisis? Uh, at a time when we're investing in research uh, and in science, uh, uh, we can make the impossible become possible. I think that in less than a year, uh, we uh, could have a, a vaccine that works. Uh, now, you don't send uh, people to the moon uh, with a speech. Uh, you do it uh, with uh, 20 billion uh, uh, dollars of investment. Uh, that's uh, how uh, you manage to pull off such a feat. Uh, and our speeches uh, will not create uh, the medical protective equipment. Uh, that's not what's going to help us uh, make uh, scientific progress. So, Mrs. Kirkenerkides, I would ask us uh, to write history in the interest of all of Europe. Thank you very much. Zakaropoulou, uh, Mrs. Zakaropoulou, Ms. Zakaropoulou is there next speaker. Madame la Commissaire, Commissioner, may I first uh, warmly welcome this ambitious program uh, for Europe's health. Facing this unprecedented pandemic, women healthcare workers are on the front lines in all of our countries, and I salute them. But there is another reality inequality and disparities in access to healthcare disparities between men and women, so it's urgent for us to take action. We must move forward in our knowledge of gender and sex and include these areas in Europe for Health. We need to in ensure there are areas dealing with health and research, and we need to, to take into account the specificities to each sex in order to contribute to educating the population and our healthcare workers. Commissioner Stella, talking about women's health, is impossible without talking about sexual and reproductive rights and sex education. These are the foundations for the emancipation and the improvement of women's health. And this is a matter of public health, but also a matter of dignity. But in Europe and the world over, conservatives are attacking women's bodies again and again. The latest example of this is in Poland. Here in Europe, can we really accept uh, in vitro fertilization tourism? Can we really? Uh, bear women dealing with clandestine abortions. We must take these issues into account in putting together this program. Commissioner, in this Europe of values, in this Europe of healthcare that we want to see, health and rights are intertwined for all. Thank you. Peter Lisa, you're our next speaker. Thank you, President. Dear colleagues, I would like to start off by expressing my heartfelt congratulations to the rapporteur, Mr. Boussoy, and to everybody else who's worked on this report. I think we have a, a very good concept now for this new health program. And I would also like to express thanks to Manfred Weber and to others who have meant that we now have a good financial allocation for this, because we have far more money available now than in the uh, uh, current uh, program. And this is not as much as perhaps we had wanted, but it does allow us to have far more opportunities to specifically help patients right across the European Union. And first of all, of course, we have to tackle this awful pandemic. I think everybody should take a look at the number of deaths, not only infections. Yesterday, 
Just yesterday, 4,000 people died of the coronavirus pandemic. So it is essential that we act, and it is essential that our governments take the necessary measures. And this is why I'm wearing a mask while I'm speaking, because obviously when you're talking, droplets come out. If you're wearing a mask, that prevents that. But Mr. Boothoy is quite right. We have to think in the long term. And for obviously, for the European Parliament, cancer is a very important matter. The Commission submitted a proposal. We have improved, uh, as the European Parliament, we have improved that proposal because we want to have better screening, better treatment of cancer right across Europe. So thank you to everybody who has helped. The next speaker is straight from Lisbon, Mr. Serdes. Thank you, President. Colleagues, Commissioner, European has asked for it, and today the Parliament is giving them an answer. 2020 has been a difficult year with an unprecedented crisis, exposing the fragility of our healthcare systems in all EU member states. Healthcare is a national competence, and this led to an initial weak response to the pandemic. The European Commission, as a response, presented the ambitious uh, plan. We're going to be adopting a plan based on two key elements to avoid the mistakes we've made in the past and to guarantee a sustainable future in the field of health. A program focusing on health care, on policy, that's going to rise to the challenges we're facing when it comes to transmitted diseases, infectious diseases and non-infection infectious diseases a European health plan that's going to drive down inequalities when it comes to health, guaranteeing universal health care, focusing on promoting health in all the different aspects of preventing illnesses. No one can be left out of this plan. We need to learn from this pandemic. The health of this union cannot rest on member states working at 27 different speeds. We need harmonization, we need coordination in our health care programs. That's why we're voting for a mechanism that's going to give answers uh, to uh, public health problems. We cannot afford a new pandemic. We need to identify the weaknesses and the possibilities we have in our healthcare union. And we need a baseline of healthcare in each of the 27 member states. Scientific proof has shown that each euro invested in public health yields 14 euros over time. With the conclusions of the negotiations, the budget was tripled, leading to over 5 billion for this program. And now the time has come to make this even